You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Hey, this is Owen. If you're comfortable, leave your first name and state at the sound of the tiny truck backing up. It is Cloud, and I'm from Ohio. So basically, I was wondering um, if you ever think the Jehovah's Witnesses will turn into a death cult. Because I was on, I believe, Lloyd Evans' channel called, correct me if I'm wrong, um, and it said the Jehovah's Witnesses believe the world will end before the end of the year. Do you think this could possibly lead them to a Heaven's Gate or Jonestown situation? It's very worrying to me. Also, how's Manhattan? And I hope you have an amazing night, hun. Bye. There was a poll uh, forever ago. I don't remember. It's been like a year or two. The poll basically was, would you take a pill provided by the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses if they asked you to? And I don't remember what the results were. And it, it was not an official poll. You have to take it with a grain of salt. But is that the saying? With a grain of salt or a grain of sand? Whatever. Anyway, you have to be careful. You can't take it too seriously. That's the point. But the number was non-zero. It was reasonably high, if I remember correctly. I feel like it was around the 50s or the 60s who said, yes, I would. That should be concerning to everybody. Now, here's the thing about Jehovah's Witnesses. They have been predicting the end would be here any five minutes now for 100, 125, 150 years. This is not new, but they keep getting more and more urgent, if that's even possible. They predicted the end would come in like 1874 or something like that. And then again in the early 1900s, again in 1913, 1914... Again, in 1922, 1925, I mean, they just kept doing these predictions over and over again. And they finally did another prediction in 1975. This is like their 50th failed prediction, right? And they were sure. They stopped saying the end is near and started saying the end is here. They even had a catchphrase, stay alive to 75. And it was like a branding thing. You know, if you're in your hospital bed, if you're on your deathbed, just make it one more day, one more week, one more year. Just have to make it to 1975. And that kind of bit them in the ass because, you know, obviously nothing happened when that time came. So they stopped, the, the society, the governing body, stopped making overt predictions like that. But they would they drop hints. The circuit overseers, the leadership, the governing body, they'd drop little hints every now and then. They'd say they would hint that, you know, the end we wouldn't even see the year two thousand. They'd hint there's no point in going to college, no point in trying to better your life in any way, because we're not even gonna make it to the year two thousand. There's no point. Nobody in the Jehovah's Witness religion believed that we would see the year two thousand. So here we are, the year 2020, 2021, 2022, and they're getting more and more urgent. Again, they keep making these predictions. And they made this this newer prediction called the second generation teaching. Jehovah's Witnesses have always taught that the end would come before the generation who was alive and baptized and anointed during the events of 1914. They would, the end would come before they died. That's the generational teaching, basically. I don't know its official name. We're over 100 years past 1914 now, so when that didn't happen, they had to come up with the second generation teaching, which is anybody who was alive during the lifetimes of anybody who was alive during the events of 1914. That's when the end will come. By artificially extending it like that, they give themselves roughly 15 to 20 years from now. Something has to happen in the next 15 to 20 years, or they're going to have to revise their claim again. So, yeah, they've just, they keep digging themselves a hole and making things uglier and uglier for themselves, basically. Uh, it keeps getting more and more urgent, and they're more and more convinced every day that the end will, is right around the corner. So that's where Jehovah's Witnesses sit right now. Hi, Owen. This is Daniel from California. I have a question. As an atheist, uh, how do you go about getting a girlfriend? 
How did you manage to get a girlfriend as an atheist? Uh, because that's really hard. I recently had uh, an account on blackpeoplemeet.com, and I basically got rid of it because it wasn't working out. Um, I believe in being honest, and I told uh, the uh, women that I was an atheist, and they basically rejected me because of that. And also in um, Christian religions, they believe that you should not be unequally yoked with a non-believer. So I'm wondering about that, because you mentioned several times you have a girlfriend. How did you manage to get a girlfriend as an atheist, and how do you find atheist women? Um, I really like your channel. Thanks a lot. Bye. Good question. How do you find a girlfriend as an atheist? Because atheists are, you know, a very small segment of the population. I found my girlfriend online, actually. I found her through the internet. And that's one of the only ways left, really, for atheists to meet. But let me give you some figures here. Uh, these figures may be outdated, so you're going to want to double-check them on your own. I believe, last I checked, 6% of the U.S. population identifies, self-identifies as atheists. They do not believe in God, right? And then 30-something percent, or maybe 27 percent or something like that, put themselves in the none category, no religion, right? So they don't have any strong opinions on religion, basically. And then the rest identify as soft Christian. I'm guessing, based this is an educated guess, but I think around 40 percent of the U.S. identifies as hard Christian, like it's a core piece of who they are. It's a core piece of their identity. And then 25 to 30 percent are religious extremists. That's roughly my estimate, right? There is a, a good subset of the population who is willing to talk to you no matter what. You know, if they're a soft Christian or even if they identify as none, I would say that's acceptable. Like, you don't have to jump in with both feet and say, I'm an atheist. You can just kind of slowly work your way into it. I know it's a core piece of who I am, my identity, but I take it slow usually when I'm introducing myself to people and stuff. I kind of gauge their feelings about the subject and let yourself make the decision. If they aren't okay with this kind of thing, they aren't okay with atheism or something, then you don't have to be with them. Don't don't put it on them and let them make the decision. You make the decision. I, I would recommend that. I mean, I don't know how much use that advice is to you, but who knows? Maybe give it a shot and see how it goes. Hey, Owen, this is Hannah from New York. I just had a question about the Jehovah's Witnesses and their use of technology. So I've seen in some of the recent propaganda videos that they publish, um, all of the Jehovah Witnesses using like iPads, iPhones, tablets, stuff like that. So my question is, who pays for that? Is it the Watchtower Society providing this to the witnesses? Or do the Jehovah's Witnesses have to provide these things for themselves? So say I'm working at the grocery store, do I have to use my own money to purchase these kind of things if I were Jehovah's Witness? Thanks. Bye. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, the group that is the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses, basically, uh, that started out as a printing press. It was created by uh, Charles Taze Russell and some guy named Barber, I think. I forget now. Anyways, when they started it, they called themselves Bible students, right? And they started this corporation called the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, and its whole goal was to print Bibles and print the Watchtower magazine, their study notes on the Bible or whatever. Eventually, there was a hostile takeover of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, the corporation. There was a hostile takeover of it. It's an interesting story, but anyway, that's not the story I'm here to tell. As time went on, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, as a printing press, as a printing company, became less and less useful obviously, because now we're in the year like 2021, 2022, 2023. Digital media is taking over more and more as time goes on. So the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society has had to shift its usefulness uh, to digital media productions. So they're actually ceasing production 
on things like the Awake magazine. They're no longer printing it, from my understanding. That's brand new news. But they're still writing it and releasing it to, like, iPads and, and their JW app, basically, is where they're releasing it. And their members are still downloading it and reading it. So they have created these big media centers where they have software engineers who write and keep their apps up to date. They have a segment where they have writers who write new books and write new magazines, and they release all this stuff onto their apps. To answer your question more directly, who pays for it? The Jehovah's Witnesses pay for it, like the people, directly. The members, each member has to buy their own stuff. And if they can't afford an iPad or whatever, for the most part, typically, they can still get a printed version of the Watchtower or whatever else, if it's requested at the very least. But they're really pushing people to go digital now, interestingly enough. I had a couple of questions from listeners I wanted to hit. These are big topics, so I'm not going to spend too long on them. I just wanted to hit a couple of these questions because they're relevant, important news stories happening right now that relate to what I'm doing. What do you think of Richard Dawkins' comments about Down syndrome? Now, I don't know if you guys have heard this or not, but Richard Dawkins, uh, if you don't know who this guy is, he's a famous atheist. He's, an, he's a biologist. And he's written lots of books. He's probably the most famous atheist in the world, I would be willing to say. Very big deal, this guy. In 2014, somebody said, somebody tweeted at Richard Dawkins and said, I honestly don't know what I would do if I were pregnant with a kid with Down syndrome. Real ethical dilemma. And Richard Dawkins responded, abort it and try again. It would be immoral to bring it into the world if you have the choice. This was a pretty contentious, questionable thing that Richard Dawkins said, and a lot of people have been talking about it in my community. So I wanted to just touch on it for a minute and let you guys know what I think. Um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with abortion, generally speaking. It's just a, a clump of like 150 cells. You know, it's no different than scratching your nose. You kill more cells doing that than getting an abortion in most cases. Up to 10 weeks, I think the fetus is about the size of a strawberry. So you're killing a little bit more than the cells that you scratch off of your nose, but it's still not sentient. It's not really, it's not human by any stretch of the imagination. It, it, it is just a grouping of cells at that point. It's a large grouping, but it's just a grouping of cells. There's no brain stem, no nothing to speak of yet. So when Richard Dawkins says abort it and try again, for the most part, I don't think I have a problem with abortion in any context at all. Um, that being said, I don't like Richard Dawkins for other reasons. I think the guy is kind of a scumbag and has really made, really made the atheist community look bad. I feel that I'm going to have to think about this subject a little bit more if I think it's wrong to specifically abort if Down syndrome is an issue. I don't know. I haven't really put that much... Well, I've put a lot of thought into it, but I haven't come to a conclusion. But I have plenty of other reasons to hate the guy. So, you know, I, I don't need to add that one to the list right now. I'm just going to mull it over what he said and the idea that he proposed uh, before I hate him for that, too. What do you think of the Israel-Palestine conflict? This is an extremely contentious issue, and I don't want to get into it too much either, just like the other one, but I will say, generally speaking, I stand with human rights, which by default means I stand with Palestine at the moment. Yes, Hamas is a terrorist organization. Yes, they've done terrible things. Yes, they've stored missiles in United Nations schools next to children. Yes, they've done all that shit. But Israel is the power in that area right now. They are the, they have all the cards and they have the world's support. And with that status, they need to be more responsible about what they're doing. They need to have compassion and approach things in a calmer manner and seek out peace, actually seek out peace. 
I hold them responsible for what's happening right now because they hold all the cards. And not to mention the fact that Israel has powerful weapons, powerful bombs, powerful missiles, and powerful anti-missile defense systems. And Hamas is shooting off these little homemade things stuck together with chewing gum and paper clips. Israel holds all of the power here. What they're doing is wrong. But what they have done up to now has not respected human rights, and I don't want to see this go any further. We need to get the far-right extremists out of government in Israel. If we could get the far-right extremists like Netanyahu out of government in Israel, things would be much more peaceful, I, I hope. And I would like to go back to the 1967 borders and sanction Israel if they break that agreement. If they try to go out and capture settlements and capture land outside of the 1967 borders, then they should be sanctioned. I'm willing to hear arguments for either side, but that's my take on it right now. I feel like Israel is abusing their position and their power in disgusting ways, and they are not respecting human rights. That's just a fact. And saying they did it too or they did it first, that's not an excuse. That's not okay. You can't just excuse your disgusting, abhorrent behavior by saying they did it too. Next, we're going to talk about all the pastors parroting what Trump's election attorney said the other day, that Trump still has the ability to authorize a nuclear first strike. Give us 30 seconds, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. The next story I wanted to talk about is titled, Lynn Wood, Trump has secret military back channel to authorize nuclear strikes. This is on rawstory.com, and there's a video that goes with this, a couple of videos actually. But let's read this article and see what it had to say. It's written by David Edwards. Election attorney Lynn Wood claimed this week that former President Donald Trump maintains a secret back channel to the US military that allows him to order nuclear strikes. If you guys don't know who Lynn Wood is, he's an extremely famous, particularly in the QAnon community, famous person. He was Trump's election attorney, basically, and he's a complete conspiracy theorist, and he is a hero in the QAnon community. So things that he says carry around the world, seriously. It's extremely concerning when he starts spouting off these batshit crazy conspiracy theories because people pick them up and run with them. No joke. And I'll, sh I'll show you an example in a minute. Let's finish this article. Wood made the assertion during an event in Myrtle Beach where he was campaigning to become the next South Carolina Republican Party chair. Video was later obtained by Patriot Takes. He won the election, Wood said of Trump. Donald J. Trump is still the guy the military will call for the code if they need a first strike. Joe Biden is not the president of the United States. Let's watch the clip and see what he had to say. Donald J. Trump has never conceded has he? Because he won the election, so be cool. It, it doesn't matter if he's conceded or not. It's completely irrelevant. I don't know why people keep saying this. It does not matter. Donald Trump's term ends on at noon on January 20th. That's what the Constitution says. Whether Joe Biden is sworn in or not is irrelevant. Trump's term ended. Let's keep listening. Oh, we'll be good at time. Donald J. Trump is still the guy the military will call for the code if they need a first strike. You know why that's relevant? He's basically saying that the military is... Uh, still recognizes Donald Trump as the political leader of the country. He's saying, even though the people and the media and whatever else don't really, you know, don't view Trump as the political leader, the military still does. And that's what's important. Because in countries, if you have the military's backing, 
then you are the political leader, period. That's how coups start. That's how coups are successful. I mean, political and military coups won't work if you don't have the military behind you. That's exactly what happened in Myanmar. I mean, Myanmar had a leader, and the leader was taken out by the military, and they just canceled the election completely. Same thing happened in Turkey a few years ago. I remember watching it on TV. There was a political coup against Erdogan, the leader in Turkey. Wait, it is Erdogan, isn't it? It's not Duterte. That's in the Philippines, I think. Yeah, I believe it's Erdogan. Anyways, Erdogan was basically taken out of power by the military, and he told the people to start rallying in the streets and fighting the military and everything, and the military coup failed against Erdogan. I guess he still had some loyal factions in the military, and he also had people rallying in the streets for him and stuff. But that's how you win coups, is by controlling the military. And that's why they are so obsessed with the idea that Trump still controls the military. If he does, then he's effectively still president, whether he lost the election or not. In the eyes of the media, in the eyes of the people, is irrelevant when it comes to the barrel of a gun. The military has the guns, and they determine who is president. But we have such strong institutions in the U.S., that the military respects the decisions of the people, and it's never even a question whether they will or not. So, anyway, let's keep listening. Joe Biden is not the president of the United States. Right. 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 Why is he up there? Right. Well, there's an acting like president. Why can't somebody stop it? This is driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got to remember this, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think. Because listen, I think they could have fixed this election in a month. Right. But we would have gone right back into the same. Okay, so he said he thinks they're going to fix the election in a month, and this was dated 5-11-21. So if by 6-11-21 they haven't, quote-unquote, fixed the election and Trump is not the president again, is somebody going to call this guy out? Is somebody going to say, you're full of shit? Somebody going to walk up to him and play this clip and say, you were wrong. You going to admit that or what? Of course not. And even if they did, it wouldn't fucking matter. These people live in fucking delusion land. Seriously. They live in a delusion, like a mass fucking delusion. They genuinely believe that their guy won. And they will deny reality to the fucking death to continue believing this shit. And one more thing. I don't know how many of you guys know who Linwood is. I didn't actually know who he was, except through one channel. The only way I know who Linwood is is because QAnon is absolutely obsessed with the guy. He's like a hero to them. If you aren't a member of QAnon, then you likely don't know who he is. So a lot of these people I'd be willing to bet are probably QAnon. At the very least, they're very politically extreme. Let's keep listening. Because hey, listen, I think they could have fixed this election in a month. Right. But we would have gone right back into the same swamp and the same mess and nothing would have really been fixed. <laughs> so remember that this isn't about Trump and this isn't about the flesh. This is about God. <laughs> this is about powers and principalities. Why do they keep bringing God up every time they bring up Trump? Why do they keep saying this isn't about Trump, this is about God? Every time these extreme Trump supporters come out, they start talking about how this is about God, this is about what God wants. Is that fucking weird to anybody else? God's getting ready to clean up this world, and he's got a lot of cleaning up to do in America. So you don't want Trump to come back yet. Because some things are going to have to happen. He's going to enjoy it when the bad stuff happening. Whoa, <laughs> how do you like that Biden administration? Not- are you kidding me? He's saying God didn't want Trump to be in right now because a bunch of bad shit has to happen. And God wants to make sure that everybody thinks Biden is in control when all that bad shit happens so that when Trump is put back in control, blah, blah, blah. That's fucking ridiculous. Lots of bad shit happened under Trump's watch. Like, for example, the pandemic. 
I mean, that, that was pretty fucking bad, right? And that was on Trump's watch. Again, Trump's watch, but Trump is watching. I believe, my own personal belief, is that he signed the Insurrection Act. Nobody knows. He's not going to tell anybody. I think the military is prepared to act if we... Oh, you think Trump could keep his fucking mouth shut about something like that? You think he could keep his mouth shut about signing the Insurrection Act? Give me a break. A foreign threat or an internal threat that can't be handled by the police or the National Guard. And we're going to allow there to be what appears to be continuity of government. It's going to be painful about some things where you learn about what you could have gotten if you'd really gotten Biden. Because he's cleaning things up. These people are eating it up. Look at their facial expressions. They're buying it. They're believing it. And it's not just these people. There's a pastor named Larry Gators who had some things to say after this aired. So let's give this one a watch and see what Pastor Larry Gators had to say. Tom Hanks is dead. Newsflash. <laughs> Tom Hanks is dead. I'm sorry? What? <laughs> Okay, we're way out on left field now. If this one isn't making sense immediately, the whole Tom Hanks is dead thing, it's because this guy's queuing on. We'll, con we'll get to that in a second. Let's keep listening. That's right. Okay. Joe Biden is dead. Yes. Okay? Come on. Joe Biden is dead. That's an interesting one, isn't it? In a minute, we're going to talk about Robin Bullock, Pastor Robin Bullock, saying Joe Biden doesn't exist. And if you remember earlier... We talked about a clip before in the in the previous segment where people were saying that Joe Biden doesn't exist, too. Hank Kuhneman said it. 46-1. No, 46 doesn't exist. Let's keep listening. The Clintons are dead, okay? Yeah. Yes. You've got clones running this country. Right. See, I got the test testicular fortitude to say what needs to be said. Why? Because I'm a man of God. Oh, okay. So I understand. So I'm not a man of God. And that means I don't have the testicular fortitude to say it, even though I know that it's a fact. Joe Biden and the Clintons and everybody, they're clones. I'm just afraid to say it outright because I'm not a man of God. I'm on Satan's payroll, right? I mean, Satan's paying me to talk shit about God and everything. And if I said that the Clintons were clones or whatever, Satan would be pissed, right? That makes perfect sense. Man, you have to. Truth. Truth. You got these pontified pre. Well, I, I, I don't want to lose my 501c3. Oh, come so on. So we have to use wisdom. Stop, okay? You need to sit down and shut up. Yes. That's right. Oh. That's right. That's right. Okay. Exactly. So exactly. Trump is surrounded by the military mm -hmm. at Mar a Laga. Yes. That's Trump right. has the nuclear codes. That's right. Trump has the military who turned their back on Joe Biden. That's right. That's right. Where is he getting this? Who fucking knows, right? He's getting this from Lynn Wood. He's getting this from this guy right here on screen. Lynn Wood started talking about how the military responds to Trump and not to Biden and all this other batshit crazy stuff saying that Trump has the nuclear codes and he has the, the power and responsibility to launch a nuclear first strike. Trump's election attorney comes out with all this shit, and all of a sudden, we hear pastors parroting this. Lynn Wood holds more power than he should. People respect his batshit crazy opinion way fucking more than they should. Let's keep listening. Joe Biden. That's right. That's right. And Trump has Air Force One. Patriots, QAnons, President Trump is still the president. These people live in a fucking delusion. Sadly, it's a mass delusion. A disturbing number of people buy this shit. At least 20 million people believe the things that this guy said. Those are just boilerplate cookie cutter ideas presented by the far right. About 20 million people. We've got about 80 million evangelicals in the country, give or take. And somewhere around 70 million Catholics in the country. By and large, I don't think Catholics have been as susceptible to the QAnon shit as evangelicals have been. But, you know, a, a lot of Catholics fell for it too. And about 27% of evangelicals by the most boilerplate basic QAnon stuff, at least. 
That's about 22 million people total, give or take. And these people, 22 million, believe what this pastor, Larry Gators, was saying. Out of curiosity, I went to the QAnon Wikipedia page because I was wondering what failed predictions they had. And I found a list, sure enough, of failed QAnon predictions. So I figured we'd kind of read through the list a little bit and see what it was. Number one, the storm would take place on November 3rd, 2017. There were no notable events in U.S. politics on that day. The storm would take place on January 20th, 2021, the day of Biden's inauguration. No coup took place, and Biden was peacefully inaugurated. The storm, of course, is the this claim that a military coup is going to happen, and you know, Trump is going to have a whole bunch of people arrested. All of his political opponents will all be arrested and all this other shit. Anyways, that's what the storm is. A major event involving the Department of Defense would take place on February 1st, 2018. Again, failed prediction. But these QAnon people still aren't going to accept that. People targeted by the president would commit en masse on February 10th, 2018. No prominent people committed that day. There would be a car bombing in London around February 16th, 2018. There was no bombing. The Trump military parade would never be forgotten. Parade was canceled. The five eyes won't be around much longer, quote unquote. Five eyes are the five major military, I'm sorry, the five major intelligence agencies, intelligence communities. I think it's New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the UK, and the US. I believe those are the five eyes. Something major would happen in Chongqing on April 10th, 2018. Nothing notable happened in Chongqing that day. There would be a bombshell revelation about North Korea in May 2018. There were no notable developments. A smoking gun video of Hillary Clinton would emerge in March 2018. No video appeared. Multiple failed predictions that John McCain would resign from the U.S. Senate. McCain remained in the Senate until his death in August 2018. Multiple failed predictions that Mark Zuckerberg would leave Facebook and flee the U.S. Zuckerberg remains CEO of Facebook as of March 2021. Multiple failed predictions that Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey would be forced to resign. Dorsey remains CEO of Twitter as of May 2021. Multiple failed predictions that Pope Francis would be arrested on felony charges. Failed predictions that something big would happen or the truth would emerge next week. Multiple times they've said that. Multiple failed predictions that Donald Trump would be re-inaugurated on January 20th, 2021, despite losing the election. Joe Biden was inaugurated as planned on January 20th. Donald Trump would be inaugurated on March 4th, 2021, as the 19th president. This claim stems from a conspiracy theory stating that the District of Columbia Organic Act of 1871 made the U.S. into a corporation, a theory developed by the Sovereign Citizen Movement. Therefore, Trump would have been inaugurated as the 19th president after Ulysses S. Grant, and the country would cease to be a corporation and once again become the country started by the Founding Fathers. March 4th is the inauguration date because the 20th Amendment changed the date to January 20th, and no amendments to the U.S. Constitution since 1869 are recognized. Joe Biden remains the incumbent and 46th president of the U.S. Donald Trump would be inaugurated again on March 20th, 2021. After the failed prediction that Trump would be inaugurated on March 4th, QAnon delayed the inauguration date on uh, to March 20th. Joe Biden remains the president of the U.S. It is failed prediction after failed prediction with these people. They do not give up, seriously. And when forced to face their own delusion, they still deny it. And it's an embarrassment. Next, we're going to talk about Robin Bullock apparently actually believing that Joe Biden literally doesn't exist. Give us 30 seconds and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com.
The next article I wanted to talk about is titled Christian Evangelist, President Joe Biden Doesn't Exist. This is by Hemet Mehta on the Friendly Atheist website. And I've actually covered this article before. The article isn't exactly what I wanted to talk about. I was going to use the article to remind you of this whole situation. And then we're going to watch some clips by Robin Bullock that he just put out recently, just like a few days ago. So let's read the article and see what this had to say. Televangelist Robin Bullock, who said last November that the COVID crisis could be blamed on people who voted for Hillary Clinton, is going even crazier on his political ideas. He said last week that not only is Donald Trump still president, President Joe Biden doesn't exist. Now, when I originally heard this, I thought to myself, you know, maybe that's kind of an unfair interpretation. Let's listen to the clip. Let's listen to Robin Bullock use his own words and see if that's actually what he meant. The Lord told me, he said, uh, Joe Biden will not be president. He'll not be president. Huh, weird, because this is uh, this clip came out in February. Joe Biden had been president for at least a month at this point. I think it was February 18th when this came out. I could be wrong on that date. Mid-February, anyways. So, what happened? Kind of dropped the ball on that one, huh? You going to admit you're wrong, or are you going to come up with some bullshit excuse like every other supposed prophet? I'm going to tell you something, brother. And people say, yeah, but yeah, but he's, he's in the office, but he's not the president. He's not recognized as the president. Oh, he decided to go the bullshit excuse route. Okay. He'll never be recognized as the president. Heaven does not know him as the president. See, you can pray for the office of the president. You can pray for a man named Joe Biden, but you cannot pray for President Joe Biden because he doesn't exist. Boom, right there, because he doesn't exist. Now, some people heard that, namely Hemet Mehta, and they were like, that's kind of weird, right? Is Robin Bullock saying... Joe Biden does not exist. Let's be super extra charitable here, okay? Maybe he meant he doesn't exist as president. He's not saying Joe Biden, the human being, doesn't exist, right? I mean, that's not the message he's trying to communicate to us. But then this came out. You can pray for a man named Joe Biden. You should. Don't, don't, don't get off in hate. You should pray. Okay? You can pray for the office of the president, but you cannot pray for President Joe Biden because you might as well pray for the Easter Bunny because he don't exist. Okay, now that was fairly specific and clear, right? He's saying Joe Biden is like the Easter Bunny. He does not exist. It... it is he saying that Joe Biden literally isn't a person that, that's alive and breathing like he's not real? And there's no anointing. And if you celebrate it or congratulate him, you've entered into his sin. Oh, that's, that's kind of fucking weird to me. It seems pretty fucking weird. If that doesn't convince you, I've got another clip for you. This clip might have come out on the podcast channel. It might have come out on the main channel. I'm not sure. It probably came out before this clip that we're watching now, though. So look around on my channel and see if you can find it if you're interested. This is Larry Gators. We talked about this guy in the last clip. Let's listen to what he said. Tom Hanks is dead. Newsflash. <laughs> Tom Hanks is dead. That's right. Dead. Joe Biden is dead. Yes, okay. come on. He took the, the shot. Clintons are dead, okay? Huh, that's weird. So this guy is saying that Joe Biden is dead also, or that he doesn't exist otherwise. This is a really fucking weird trail to follow right now. People are literally saying Joe Biden isn't real, doesn't exist, he's like the Easter Bunny, or he's dead, or all of the above. What the fuck is going on right now? Are these people literally claiming that Joe Biden does not exist? Seriously, that is what I'm picking up here. I started out trying to be charitable to this guy. I started out saying maybe we misunderstood what he was saying. Second by second here, I'm becoming more and more convinced that he really genuinely believes that Joe Biden is not real. 
Let's listen to the next clip by Robin Bullock. This one came out really, really recently. It was just a few days ago. We give prophecies about the president. Okay, Donald J. Trump is the only president. He's the president. Now, I mean, he you is. know, you, you'd have to be, you just have to, you know, I was born near a tub, but I wasn't born under one. What the holy fuck does that mean? Is that a saying I've never heard before? I wasn't born under a tub? I don't get it. Is this something I'm missing? Tell me in the comments. I've never heard that saying before. It sounds absolutely fucking ridiculous. Notice how he's desperately trying to convince you that you're the delusional one. That's called gaslighting. Gaslighting is a, a term that's way overused nowadays, but it's actually a psychology term. It's like a scientific term that refers to people trying to convince you of something that you know for a fact to be false. The term originally came from a movie. I think it came out in the uh, 30s, the 1930s or something. And it was, a, it was about a woman who was living with an abuser, and he kept changing the, the light level. They used to use gas to power lights before like electricity was widespread. So they would have a light on the wall that was connected to a gas line and you would turn the gas up or down to make the flame bigger or smaller, right? So this guy would fuck with the flame. He would make it bigger and he'd make it smaller. And the woman would say, are you changing the size of the flame? Are you changing the, the gas level on the light? And he'd say, no, you're crazy. That's not what I'm doing. That's not happening. They, they haven't changed at all. That's the origin of the term gaslighting. And it made her doubt her own sanity, her own memory. It isn't as simple as just lying to somebody. It's a lot more elaborate than that. And it's an abuse tactic. And it's also a tactic commonly used by cults to make you more malleable, more impressionable, more willing to accept things that you're told, even if you know that they're not true. That's what cults really need you to do. Accept things that are not true. So, anyways, this guy is gaslighting us right now. Pretty hard. I was born near a tub, but I wasn't born under one. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you, Donald J. Trump is the president. Okay. All right, he's the president. If, if, we're, not, if we're not right about that, then why did Newsweek jump all over me? Because you're a who's obsessed with being correct about this when you're just flat out wrong. I don't understand. What's the connection here? Am I missing something? They jump all over me. And you know what their argument was, Steve? It was something to this effect. The prophets are apologizing, but Robin D. Bullock will not apologize or some of the other ones. Well, I knew the other ones they were talking about. Yeah, I assume when he says the other ones, they're the ones that I've been talking about. I guess Newsweek did an article on Robin Bullock, this guy we're looking at here. And I, I haven't seen the article, but I'm assuming they probably mentioned all of the other big ones. Hank Kuhneman, Johnny Enlow, Kat Kerr, and, you know, all the other guys that we've been talking about for a while. Well, I knew the other ones they were talking about. But notice this. Why did they get so mad? Because I won't apologize. Because right. they know he's the president. They know right. it. Well, as we know it. No. Uh, I, I'm kind of fucking irritated about the fact that this guy won't admit that he was wrong. But that's because I don't like the fact that he's manipulating people and gaslighting them and lying and trying to cover up his own fuck up. Cover up his own mistakes instead of just admitting when he's wrong like an adult this guy is an embarrassment dude it's so fucking sad and it's especially disturbing to hear him trying to gaslight people like that seriously gaslighting is no joke that's what you do to an abuse victim that's what cults do to their members Cody Anglin, Bullock was saying that President Joe Biden is like the Easter Bunny still a nut job but he was saying he doesn't exist as president right that's what I thought, too. That, that, that would be the charitable explanation. But then we've got a bunch of these QAnoners who believe, just like Robin Bullock, because he is a QAnoner, too, who say Biden is dead. and he, Biden doesn't exist. That's what they're saying. Literally does not exist. The QAnon people are saying Biden doesn't exist. He has, it's just a dead body. It's not real. 
just like the Clintons and whatever else. I don't think the charitable explanation applies to Bullock because he is a QAnoner. And that's the standard QAnon position. That Biden doesn't exist. Literally does not exist. I mean, if you think I'm wrong, then I'm down to hear your take on it. Uh, in fact, I'll put this in the clip, even. I'll, I'll make reference to this super chat in the clip. And if anybody listening here agrees with Cody Anglin, put it in the uh, comments. And tell me why you think that Bullock actually meant he doesn't exist as president, but not literally doesn't exist as a human like the other QAnon people do not being generous to Bullock this is Cody Anglin but he says in both clips you can pray for the man Joe Biden the president but not the president Joe Biden that's true um that would be the charitable interpretation but one could argue he wasn't talking about the Joe Biden that we know and love as the president one could argue he was saying there are men out there named Joe Biden that you can pray for. That, But the man that we know as Joe Biden is not the president and, and doesn't exist. Uh, that would be my argument. And honestly, I, I, I could agree with you that he wasn't saying that. And I think when I talked about this article originally by Hemant Mehta, I said, I don't think that that's what he means necessarily. But then I saw a bunch of these other videos by Q people saying Joe Biden is dead. Joe Biden isn't real. He's not a real person. It's being run by the cabal and all that other shit. And knowing what I know about Robin Bullock and the fact that he's in QAnon, he's a QAnon believer, that led me to the conclusion that he literally doesn't think that Biden doesn't exist. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just my take. And again, I will put this conversation that you and I have had in the video so that people can decide for themselves and leave comments underneath about it. Maybe you're right. That's just what I think about it. Next, we're going to talk about Pastor Todd Coconato going completely off the deep end. Give us 30 seconds and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. The next article I wanted to talk about is titled, Pastor, Biden isn't really president since Trump has God's mantle of anointing, quote unquote. Now, I've actually read this article before. Uh, this article isn't the one I wanted to talk about specifically. I just wanted to reintroduce you to this guy, Todd Coconato. I've talked about him a few times before. He's also famous for saying that after the election, when Trump wins, atheists will become believers because it'll be so amazing what God does with Trump and all that other shit. I've talked about that one a couple of times, uh, but this guy released a new clip recently. So I wanted to talk about the new clip, but before we get there, let me remind you of who he is. Let's read the article. It's by Hemant Mehta on the Friendly Atheist website. Last year, Pastor Todd Coconato, a Christian member of the MAGA cult who routinely interviews the kind of evangelicals who surround Donald Trump, claimed that atheists would convert to Christianity after God helped overturn the election results. That never panned out, yet he continued to pretend Trump won in a landslide. He's still playing this game, spreading lies to his Christian followers. His latest way to reconcile his delusion with reality is to say Joe Biden isn't actually the president because God's anointing remains with Trump, whatever that means. This clip came out around mid-April for context. Okay, well, do you still think President Trump might become president again? I do, because I, I, I prayed about it, and... I'll tell you, what God said to me was, was kind of shocking. Not really, but... I love it. What God said to me was kind of shocking. Not really, but... Well, is it shocking or not? When I prayed about if we'd ever see President Trump as our president again, God just reminded me that he's the one that chooses the leadership, not us. He allows certain things to happen, but he also responds to the prayers of the righteous. Okay, well, hold on for a second here. So if God chooses the leadership and not us... 
and Joe Biden is the president. I mean, are you following my logical progress here? Are we making the logical steps together? Or And what he was telling me is, is that just like David, and I think I said this in a past uh, live stream, but just like David, President Trump has the mantle of leadership, has the anointing of leadership. So, According to who? According to you? Like, obviously, Biden is the president now. So who told you that Trump had the mantle of anointing? And why did you believe them? Did you ever think maybe that somebody played a big fucking trick on you? That's why it, it's kind of confusing to saints that are looking and, you know, they're, they're wondering what's going on because they see Joe Biden and they're like, this guy doesn't seem like he's, you know, authentic, like he's real. Is he really the president? Is he really? And I said, God, why are so many people questioning if Joe Biden is the president? I mean, could- who? Who's questioning that? Uh, only your weird little group. That's it. I find this kind of interesting. You actually used weasel words there. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that term before, but weasel words are words that refer to some ambiguous, amorphous group of people. Critics say, for example, or some people are saying this thing or that thing, not providing sources, not providing any evidence of any kind, just saying something and claiming that some people are saying that thing. Jen Psaki, the press secretary, I think, for Biden, actually called somebody out recently for that. Uh, the woman said, some people are saying that this is just a third term for Obama. And Jen Psaki was like, who's saying that? Who said that? Can you tell me exactly where you got that from? And they just continued on to make shit up, make more shit up, uh, completely nonsensical and dodged it because there's no answer to that. When you hold their feet to the fire and ask them who these critics are or who these people, these unnamed people are, they have no answer because there is no answer. This guy's using weasel words here. They're, they're wondering what's going on because they see Joe Biden and they're like, this guy... This who, who is saying that? They are wondering. They see this guy and they say... Seem like he's you know, authentic, like he's real. Is he, real? he doesn't seem authentic, doesn't seem like he's real. Who's saying that? I've never met anybody that said that. Can you give me a source? Like, what percentage of the country is saying that or whatever? Because I've literally never heard that before. This is the kind of thing that people just make up right off the top of their head and then claim that people are saying that, some amorphous group of people. So that was Todd Coconato. In fact, that's the last video that I covered about this guy, was him saying that Trump has the mantle of anointing, God's anointing to be the president. I don't know why God gives a shit about this country or the politics in it, but whatever. But I did a little bit more digging and found out that this guy, Todd Coconato, he's actually released other videos before. This one is from December 14th, 2020. So this is about a month, month and a half after the election, somewhere in there, uh, after Joe Biden won. I mean, it was pretty definitive at this point that Joe Biden had won. Like, every world leader had congratulated him at this point in time. The only people who hadn't congratulated Biden yet are Trump, basically, and Trump's weird little cult members. So December 14th, let's listen. He's God's choice, okay? He's the man that God chose, just like King Cyrus, just like others in the Bible that were, were also flawed people. David, King David was a flawed guy, come on. But God said he was a man after his heart, and I believe Donald Trump has become a man after God's heart because he's surrounded himself by people of God, wise counsel, godly counsel, some of my friends who literally speak to the president and give him godly counsel and thank God for that. So we're standing with this president because he is the man that God chose for a time such as this. And the alternative is baby killing, Luciferian, demonic agenda of darkness and communism and taking away our rights and taking away our freedoms and taking away our religious liberties and this is a massive battle that we okay that was one hell of a rant what was that list luciferianism communism uh what what the hell else agenda of darkness and communism and taking away our rights and taking away our freedoms and Taking away our rights and our freedom? Like, what is he fucking talking about? Can he get a little bit more specific than communism? I wonder if this guy could actually define communism. I bet he couldn't. I bet he doesn't even know what it fucking is. 
Anyways, that was from December 14th, but this guy just came out with a brand new clip, just came out. So let's give this a watch and see what he had to say. They don't want voter ID because they know if there was voter ID, they'd lose, just like they lost last time. Okay, let me explain something about voter ID, all right? There's this big controversial thing about voter ID. There was a landmark Supreme Court case about voter ID a while back because... There was a state, I think it was North Carolina, I don't remember. Somebody can correct me in the comments if I got that wrong. Anyways, I believe it's North Carolina. The legislators there went out and looked up the least common type of ID that African Americans are likely to have, and they made that type of ID a requirement to vote. That specific case went to the Supreme Court. I don't remember if they won or not after it went to the Supreme Court, but that was a perfect example of racist laws that don't explicitly list African Americans or or any other race. You can have racist laws without listing the race in the law itself. That's a good example of it. So that kind of thing, that's what I have a problem with. We happen to know that statistically, if you require an ID to go down there and vote, you're going to disenfranchise a lot of people because it costs money and time to get an ID. And not everybody can get one. Not everybody has one. You register to vote and sign your name to it. You sign your signature to it, and they can compare signatures. And that's currently how it works. They compare signatures. Everybody gets one single vote. If somebody tries to vote twice, they see that, and they will arrest your ass for it. You can't just go out and cast 6,000 ballots for somebody. You have to have your name and your signature registered with the state for it to actually work. That's why this claim that China shipped a bunch of ballots in is outrageous. They didn't have the voter rolls. They couldn't duplicate the signatures. And even if they did, they would have caught that because the system sends up a red flag when the same person votes twice. That happens. It's a completely unrealistic claim. If you understand anything about how voting works, you understand how unrealistic and ridiculous this claim is about the, you know, the audits and the voter rolls and all of that other shit. So as far as I'm concerned, the whole voter ID thing is, one, unnecessary, and two, voter suppression. It's violating our rights to vote. You want to talk about losing rights? That's a right that people have that you're taking away. Just like, and by the way, if a, if a pipeline can be hacked, you're telling me an election can't be hacked? Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to explain how this works. <laughs> I feel that I've explained how voting works pretty well already, right? When you register to vote, your name and your signature and all of your information is all recorded in the county elections office or whatever. And when you cast a ballot, that ballot is recorded, your signatures are compared to make sure that they're the same, and then your vote is pushed through. Your vote is counted. You can't just send in 10,000 ballots with random people's names. It doesn't work. It will throw up a red flag. A pipeline wasn't hacked, from my understanding. The thing that was hacked was the software around the pipeline. If you're unaware of this news story, because it's been a while or something, a gasoline pipeline or or an oil pipeline had some ransomware uploaded to their systems, so they shut it down. The people running the pipeline shut it down until it was resolved. It was resolved, it's back up now, and gas is being distributed to the gas stations just like it was before. It was only down for a total of like five or six days. And the only reason there was a problem with it in the first place is because people like this guy were going to gas stations and filling up plastic bags full of gasoline. Anyways, aside from all of that, the pipeline had software and it had computers that were running like that. The voting system that we have 
is largely paper-based, not entirely. It's not on the internet. We're not doing this through the internet. And if we were doing it through the internet, we would certainly make sure that we were doing it in an extremely safe way. Blockchain would be a really good method of voting through the internet in a very, very secure way. I'm not super sure how I feel about voting online right now because that does open it up to hacking and stuff like that. I'd be okay with it if everybody understood how the system worked and I could go through it and figure out exactly how the code works and be very sure that it's not hackable. There are some unhackable things, surprisingly. But every time you open it up to the rest of the world, there are holes where hackers can get in and penetrate, and it just gets ugly. So you just have to be really careful when you're doing online stuff, and when you're doing voting online particularly. I heart dogs. What is blockchain? Um, blockchain is just a, a storage method, basically. It's kind of like a database, if you will. It's a database, basically. But the difference between this and any other database is that the data is immutable and incorruptible. You can't change the data. Once it's entered into the chain, it cannot be changed anymore. It's permanent. And you can go through... The reason that you can say that it's not changeable and it's permanent and that it's guaranteed to be correct is because... You base the you base a, an identifier like a, a key to each piece of data that you enter. You base that piece of data's key on the data before it. So you can go through every single piece of data and check the key and and verify that that key actually does add up to be the correct key based on all of the previous data. So blockchain is an incorruptible, unchangeable block of data that is guaranteed to be correct, basically. So I say voting would be safer if we used blockchain, because if we entered people's votes with their signature and linked that into the chain with that unique identifier that makes it immutable and incorruptible, then voting online would be safer and i'd be okay with it mostly anyway that's what blockchain is it's just a new type of database that's very very secure impossible to change or hack point is uh, the u.s voting system is largely paper-based it's largely uh, the system we use is pretty dated and that makes it very difficult to manipulate so usually republicans instead of hiring hackers or something will just go the old school way voter suppression, gerrymandering, all the same time-tested methods of manipulating the votes. Propaganda, gerrymandering, and voter suppression. Those are the, the best ways to do it, and that's what the Republican Party is best at. Anyway, let's keep listening. Rome is burning. While Rome is burning, well, you can't even go to the gas station right now and get gas. Rome is burning. This guy is just losing his fucking mind over the fact that gas stations had to close down for a total of like two or three days. And that was largely because of friends of his filling up plastic bags with gasoline instead of being reasonable and waiting it out and only getting gasoline when they needed it. And so he's freaking out about this, but didn't say shit when the virus hit on Trump's watch, and he fucked the whole thing up from beginning to end. He didn't say a fucking word about it. He was still a Trump fanboy. He still had his house decked out just like this one. I'm sorry that it's so herky-jerky with my camera at times, but wait till the end. He still believed that Trump was the savior to the human race. He still compares him to King Solomon. He still views Trump like the new Jesus, like the new Messiah, just like every other fucking pastor out there that predicted Trump would win, that prophesied Trump would win. Hank Kuhneman, Johnny Enlow, Mark Taylor, all of them. And he's sitting here talking about the fact that the gas stations ran out of gas for two or three days, not even all of them, just a few of them. Suddenly, Rome is burning. 
Not when the virus hit. Not when we were locked down in our fucking houses for a year. No. When some of the East Coast ran out of gas for three days. But you're telling me, hey, just don't say anything controversial, Pastor Todd. Don't say anything controversial. No, please. Continue. I love it. I'm eating this shit up. Keep going, man. Be careful. Really? Well, that's how we got to this mess that we're in right now, where they're calling guys, girls, and girls, guys. That's how we got to this mess. We're trying to shoot you with chemicals, tell you that you can't travel if you don't do it. Show me your papers. Vaccine passport. Are you kidding me? What a piece of trash, dude. I just want to point something out as far as the COVID vaccine and the vaccine passport stuff. Many countries already require you to be vaccinated with various different vaccines before you go. You just didn't think about it because you were vaccinated with it when you were little. The measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, the polio vaccine, all that shit. You've already got most of those. Most people do anyways. We have herd immunity to like polio here now, so it's not something you have to worry about. Most countries require a vaccine record before you can go to their countries, or some do anyways. So adding this vaccine to the list is really not that big of a deal. This dude is just fucking disintegrating over it anyways. Are you kidding me? No, we were made for a time as this to take a stand. We were made for a time as this. This is Joe Biden's America, but really, this is the enemy's America and what we're seeing right now. He's trying to play his, his last stand, his last hurrah. Trying to make it like it's the end times right now. But he's overplayed his hand. Because this is the time for the church in America to rise up, to stand up. Is this disturbing to anybody else? Seriously, is this, okay, well, is this fucking scary to anybody else? Back when Trump was the president, a lot of shit happened on his watch that these people bitched about nonstop. First of all, the vaccine happened on his watch. And he downplayed it and told people that they don't have to wear masks. And he thought about wearing a mask, but well, I don't think I'm going to wear a mask in public. And then he just went full-blown anti-mask. Then he peddled conspiracy theories about hydro hydroxychloroquine and all this other shit. Made things worse, actively worse. And then he starts talking shit about Black Lives Matter, turning it into a terrorist organization when it is not. Talking about Antifa being a terrorist organization. Again, it's not. These are all decentralized groups of people, generally speaking, just want to make the world better for the people around them and for themselves. But they went off the deep end saying that cities were burning down. And, and if ever Rome was burning, as he says, then it would have been when Trump was president. That's when all of this shit really bl broke loose. That's when the George Floyd stuff happened was during Trump's presidency. That is when Rome would be burning. But this guy has absolutely no concept of irony or hypocrisy. He has no fucking clue what those words mean, apparently. He is still living in a delusion. How are we going to break this dude out of it? How are we going to break everybody out of it? This is a problem that's not going away for us. Thank you guys for coming and giving this a listen, and I will talk to you next week. If you like what I do and you want to make sure I can continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, you can support me on Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I sell all kinds of shirts and stickers and stuff on there. Second, you can support me by checking out my Etsy store. I sell 3D printed stands for every system, from the original Nintendo to the Xbox One. And finally, if you want to support me in other ways, you can check me out on my other channels. I have the podcast channel, which is where I talk about whatever's on my mind. Politics, social issues whatever. You can also find it everywhere podcasts can be found. Or you can check out the videos on my main channel where I focus on destructive cults. As it is with most channels these days, I rely on the support of viewers like you to keep my channel alive, so sharing my work is extremely helpful. Anyways, check me out in all those places if you haven't already. Thanks for listening, guys.